His host was the president, and it was an occasion of pageantry and splendor. Next day, His Imperial Majesty paid tribute at the memorial of President Lincoln, the man who was the unifier of the nation. In the light of later events, the ceremony was of great significance, for Lincoln, like Kennedy, died by an assassin's gun. Lincoln, like Kennedy, struggled for the equality of all people, regardless of color and creed. The words of the Gettysburg Address take on an even greater meaning today. We here highly resolve that the dead shall not have died in vain, and that under God we shall have a new birth of freedom. The Emperor Haile Selassie I, in the name of his people, laid a solid silver wreath which will become a permanent part of the memorial. It was brought from 580 Ethiopian coins. A helicopter of the United States forces brought President Kennedy to the Woodmont Country Club, where he was to be guest at a state luncheon. friendship had sprung up between the two heads of state. Later that day, they were to meet again, and a joint communique was signed. Before this, however, His Imperial Majesty drove to Georgetown University, where he was to receive an honorary degree. He was met by the president of the university, the very Reverend Edward B. Bunn. Georgetown is the alma mater of all Catholic colleges in the United States. His Imperial Majesty received a doctorate in humane letters, honoris causa, as a king not alone by right of blood and succession, but by the title of his own merit and dedication. As an emperor, not by the resisting force of armed conflict and conquest, but in the gentle victory of love and solicitude for his people. And so to New York, familiar the world over for its towering skyscrapers and tempo of life. New York must easily be the busiest place in the world. His Imperial Majesty arrived at LaGuardia Airport, and Ethiopia's permanent representative of the United Nations, Dr. Tesfaye Gabriezi, was present. and Mr. Ardley Stevenson welcomed the Emperor in the name of the city. Many Ethiopians resident in the United States added their own greetings to the man they know as Emperor. And what a reception the city of New York gave him. is reserved for those whose exploits and achievements have captured the imagination of the people. The name of Haile Selassie I has been a legend for nearly 30 years, ever since those far-off days of fascist invasion and his dignified appeal to the League of Nations. Now, to admiration of his courage, has been added the love and respect which comes to those who toil hard in the service of others and in the cause of peace. It was a hero's welcome. All the way down Broadway, from the Battery to the Civic Hall, they cheered him. And when he left his car to walk amongst them, enthusiasm knew no bounds.
Outside the city hall, His Imperial Majesty received the keys of the city, the symbolic token of welcome. Soon was to follow the most important occasion of the whole visit to America. His Imperial Majesty's address to the General Assembly of the United Nations. He was received by Mr. Utant. Ethiopia is one of the founder members of UNO. Miniature replicas of the obelisks of Axum were presented by His Imperial Majesty to Mr. Utant as a decoration for the headquarters and as a symbol of Ethiopia's ever readiness to share all that she has with the world community of nations. After lunch, the Emperor addressed the General Assembly, and he spoke again to the conscience of the world. Twenty-seven years ago, at the League of Nations in Geneva, we spoke of the aggressive invasion of our country, and about the peace of the world in general. What we said in 1928 has proved to be true. And now, in the institution which has replaced the League of Nations, we have come to say what we feel about the present world situation. The principle that we stood for then was collective security, and we still maintain the same principle today. We believe that peace can only be obtained when the rights of all nations, whether big or small, are respected. The United Nations, by maintaining the collective security principle, has been working to settle differences by peaceful means rather than by force. The result of this can be seen in the fact that most African and Asian countries have gained their freedom peacefully. time came to leave the United States and to fly on northwards to Canada. An aircraft of the Royal Canadian Air Force had been provided for the journey by Transport Command. His Imperial Majesty's return to the New World had been a triumphant success. Many affairs of state had been discussed and agreements made of lasting advantage both to America and to Ethiopia. But now it was farewell. The Emperor's immediate destination was Ottawa, the seat of government and the capital of Canada since 1858. His plane arrived at the Uplands Air Force Base. His Imperial Majesty is no stranger to Canada, and he was greeted by His Excellency the Governor.